Vesta. Okay, just a few Hi, more. Vesta. Oops, I gotta turn my okay, my speakers off. Oops, gotta turn my my speak. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I had forgotten that I was watching one of Deb's um her her live and uh I had my speakers on so I had to turn them off. Okay, so I'm set up okay, so I'm set up over here. Now let me um flip the camera. Hi Jean, thank you for sharing. Okay, so do I have yes, I do. I have to flip um there. There we go. And get the window out of the way. You don't want to see the glare coming in from that window. Okay, so if I hit done, hopefully I'm not going. Okay, we're not losing anybody. Hi, Becky. Okay, here we go. Hi, Judy. How are you? Good morning, everyone. And I'm sorry if some names have passed and I didn't get a chance to say good morning. I was busy just making sure everything was set up right. And what I have found is um, in order to check the computer. Hi, Teresa. Um, I have to be watching as myself or as Julie, not the chirpy card maker. And then I can follow along with comments. So, you know, it's still those things that Facebook is changing on us all the time. And we just have to um, figure it out. But it is a good, um, it is a good way to learn the ins and out of, of Facebook and your camera on your phone and finding out where you're supposed to be finding all the buttons. Hi, Shelly. And... Oh, I think I saw, okay, Josephine's on here. Janice, good morning. <clears throat> Paula, good morning. All right, so, well, thank you for being here this morning. So, if you were able to watch the um, event that Stampin' Up! sponsored for World Card Making Day, you will remember this technique that they had shown and um, it's really fun, and I think you will probably want to use it in some of your other cards. Um, just a really neat technique that really isn't that difficult. You just need a little water spritzer. You might have a, a spray bottle that has a fine mist. So, and your um, water or water-based markers. Like I'm going to use the Stampin' Up. Um, the write and stamp and write <laughs> markers. Um, so it's it's just going to be a lot of fun. If you can get some ink on an acrylic block and be able to get it wet, you can do this technique. So um, really, without further ado, let's get started. So let me flip the camera around again. And we're just going to get situated here. Okay, so the orientation needs to flip again. There we go. And just going to move the laptop so that it's on my right side. And I can keep following along with comments as we are creating. And this lets me spread out. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Uh, my name is Julie Heights and I'm the chirpy card maker of Quilts and More. I've really enjoyed being able to take my love and appreciation of quilts and quilt patterns and incorporating them in cards and uh, so that's the that's how I got the name plus I'm a birder I love birding and so I just kind of combined all of my loves into my name <laughs> so um so that's why I'm the chirpy card maker of quilts and more 
Be, uh, the and more comes from the fact that I like to dabble in so many things. It's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> but um, it is what it is, and it keeps me busy. Hi, Tony. Thank you for sharing. Oh, good, Janice. You did watch on Saturday. Michaeline, hello. Thank you for sharing. You are going... Everyone, you're going to love this technique. So we're going to get started with the technique because in that way our, um, our paper can be drying. And as long as you don't really oversaturate your paper, it doesn't take that long. I've got some samples that I already did ahead of time so that I can keep working and, and we don't have to wait. But while we're waiting for the paper to dry, we're going to construct the card. So let's get started. Here are a couple of examples of what we're going to do. So this inked background is actually the spotlight comes from the fact that there is um, a clear space in the center of your ink that should resemble the the outline of the mask that you made for where your image is going to go so that this stands out and is like spotlighted okay and then you'll see that your color is around it what is fun about this technique is you're not going to get any two images that are exactly the same okay every one is going to be different um this is the first card that i made and when I re when I did another one, so I would have two samples, I totally did it another way. What you can see here is I wrapped my designer series paper around this smoky slate designer series paper uh, piece here. Well, when I did the second one, and what I like <laughs> is I forgot, and I wrapped it around not only the smoky slate, but the petal pink background. And I really like it. I really like wrapping the layers so that you don't get that edge where it looks like you had to go back in and, and cut off the, ac the access. If you have enough that you can wrap it around to the back and just glue it down, I think it gives it a really pretty finished edge there. So we're going to do it this way, but you can wrap your this strip of designer series paper around either the, the cardstock layer and the designer series paper or just the designer series paper and then adhere it to that layer of card colored cardstock, okay? And another thing I noticed that I did differently was here on the second card, I used Wink of Stella. Can you see it shimmering? I used Wink of Stella on the whole leaf. And this is what I call ephemera. Um, it might be, maybe I'm not using the term correctly, but to me, ephemera is like your little bits and pieces that you tuck in here and, and there to help embellish. But on the first card that I did... I only put it like down in the, um, down towards where the leaf meets the stem. So two different looks, not quite, quite as sparkly on this one as this one is, is where I used Wink of Stella on the whole leaf, but um, still both are very pretty, okay? So let's get started with our technique. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need your acrylic block with the image that you are going to stamp in the center of your spotlight. I don't have the um, Cottage Rose bundle that the catalog pairs the Abigail Rose designer series paper with. So I just went to what I had and chose Happiness Abounds. And I noticed that this flower here resembles some of the um, 
flip sides of the designer series paper from Abigail Rose. And I just chose this rose image here to use. So I just went and pulled and found something that I had. And then I'm going to use the um, wishing you all the happiness you can imagine sentiment and the happy birthday. I didn't want to go and start pulling from like 20 different sets in order to get this card done. So I'm sticking with one stamp set. And then besides the designer series paper, I'm working with the stylish, stylish shaped dies using a banner and a circle. So to do this, so you've got your, your image. You're going to need a larger clear block. You need a, a block that is going to not only cover the finished size that you want. This is just a little bit bigger than two inches. So this block here gives me enough room to color and spritz and then it cutting my pieces of shimmery uh, cardstock about the same size, I've got room to die cut or punch then, okay? So you need that block. You need a mask and just stamp your image on a piece of white cardstock and fussy cut it out and that's going to be your mask. And you can see I've used this several times. So that's my mask. You'll need pieces of either watercolor paper. The shimmery cardstock works really well. And if you don't really oversaturate the, the ink when you spray, I've even done some of these on the basic white cardstock. You just don't want to get it too wet because then it wants to start to like pill. But if you're careful, you can use basic white cardstock. So let's play. Oh, and you're going to need your uh, water based markers. I'm using Petal Pink and Crumb Cake because they coordinate with the designer series paper. You're going to need a spritzer. I'm sorry, this is not stamping up, <laughs> but it's what I have. You need a spritzer, or if you have a spray bottle that you can do a fine mist on, you can use that and just regular water. And I think that's it. Um, just an ink pad color to stamp your image when you're done. Okay? So... What we're going to do is I'm going to take, and you're going to want to do several. Because like I said, no two are going to turn out the same way. And then you've got choices that you can, um, you got choices to make on what you want to use for your card. What I like about using the Petal Pink and the Crumb Cake, what I was wanting to achieve is this Abigail Rose Designer Series paper, there's a sheet in there that is this old journal. And so what I wanted to achieve was a tea dyed or a tea stained, coffee stained type antique paper. And I really, it really did work by using the petal pink and the crumb cake together. You can get fancy and try to combine three colors, but I would start out just using two colors that work well together when those colors blend. If you use two dark colors and they blend, you're going to get a, a muddy color. So pick two colors that you know that when you blend them together, they either create a third color that's pleasing or that they just, you know... They don't create mud. Mine mine is not mud. This is crumb cake. Okay, so mine is not mud. It's crumb cake. But as you can see, there's different... No two here are the same. You can get a feel for where my mask was. And that's the open area that you're going to stamp your image. 
Now this one here, when you see the technique, you'll, you'll understand where this coloring comes from, but it is a keeper. It looks aged. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. Okay, I want to give a quick shout out to Deb Smeek. She is um, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Michigan, not too far away from me. Her page is called Delight of My Art. And I encourage you to go check her out. Um, she does a Wednesday mystery card. And she helped me brainstorm this technique because I felt like I wasn't doing something right so last night she helped me brainstorm this and i feel much better being able to demonstrate it to you so shout out to deb smeek from delight of my art um go check her out when you can okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our block and with the brush end of the marker I'm just going to lay down some color. Now with petal pink, this is hard to see. But I like to go in both directions. Just lay down the color. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit of crumb cake at the bottom. And I'm just going to make it random. Kind of go up the sides a little. Okay, so I've colored my block. You can't see it, but it's there. I am going to put my shimmery white cardstock down. You can see the shimmer. I am going to lay my mask in the middle there. So put your mask on the, the cardstock. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do this off to the side, but I'm going to give this about, I don't know, I'm going to spritz from about 10 or 12 inches away, about three squirts of water right onto the block. So one, one two, three. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to flip this over. I'm going to stamp it down to the car sock and pick up the mask, okay? I'm going to pick up the mask and then I'm going to gently pick the mask up and you can see there's an area here that has no water and then I'm going to put it back down onto my cardstock and then I've got the rest of the, the ink there. I'm going to grab a paper towel because what I want to do is I just, if I've got anything pooling, I just want to dab it because it'll help it dry a little faster. But you can see where the mask was. Can you see that? When this dries, what I'm going to come in and do is I'm going to ink this image and I am going to ink it and stamp it right in that opening that spotlights where the image goes. And then I can um, use my circle and die cut this out. So let's do another one because like I said, no two are exactly the same. So here I have another one. My mask is still holding up pretty good. So We'll put that there. I am going to wipe off the water off of my block. And let's, let's just do it again. And what I'm going to do is all of these that I haven't used, I am going to put those away. I'm going to put them in my stash. And the next time I want to do something really unique and I want that as a background, I'll pull them out and use them for something else. But it's real easy to just get going on this. And you're having so much fun because you're seeing how different they look. 
it's just easy. <laughs> and another thing, it, when you're using your markers, put your lightest color down first. Then if you get any of that on your darker color, um, it won't be as noticeable. And you can always take your, your markers and just wipe them off to get... Because especially with Petal Pink, I wouldn't want crumb cake on that Petal Pink marker and then go to color. And now I've got brown instead of Petal Pink. Easier to hide on a darker color. Okay, so let's get out the spritzer. One, one two, three. I sprayed myself first. down get some of that color on there lift up take that mask off and if you get a little bit of color onto your onto your uh, free space so to speak it's okay it just adds character and then put it back down and you can see where there was the mask kept the water from the first time getting in there it off. I'm just going to gently dab. You don't have to oversaturate at all. And look how different those two are. Can you see? And I like this in here. It just gives it um just gives it that. It reminds me of the chic, um, what is the chic uh, designer series paper that's in the catalog? It's something chic. Um, it gives me that feel. So since I've got another piece left, I'm going to do one more. And then I think you've got the gist of the technique. So since I have one more piece of cardstock, I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of samples that I can keep next to my, my area here. And when they speak to me and they work just right for the next project, whoops, I will, I will use them. You can determine if you want half and half of one color or two-thirds of one color and just the other color at the bottom. It's totally up to you. So let's put that right there. Let's see if I can spray myself again. I've been doing that pretty good. One, two, three. Pick it up. All that ink is still on there. Put it back down. And then I am going to blot. And I know it's hard to see the petal pink right now, but as it dries, it does get darker. Okay, so we're gonna let those dry. What do you think so far? Is this something that you're doing along with me? Um, or are you just wanting to watch first? Texture texture chic. Thank you, Tony. Um, hi, Peggy. <laughs> it's okay. You're here now. Uh, Tony says, I don't have the right color stamp and right mar markers. What else can I use? Can you, um, okay, let's brainstorm this. What if you took an ink pad? What if you took an ink pad and press it so that you're working some ink into the base here? And then what if you took like a... Um, a brush, a water brush, picked up the ink and put it on the block. Do you think that would work? That way you could, if you don't have the marker, maybe you've got the ink pad. 
see here I was able to put some color down. And then what if you took a water marker or a water brush and here you wouldn't really have to spritz it because you're, you're laying the water, you're putting water with it. I mean, I just wonder, let's try it. Let's try this. Let me clean this off. This is a good time just to experiment. Um, I'm going to just flip this one over. And I'm just going to do the one color because we don't know if this is going to work. So I've laid... I've got it here. And I mean, we could spritz it for a little bit more. Let's just spritz it once, see if it helps spread that out. Okay, let's just see if this is going to work. Pick up. Take the mask off. And lay it back down. Kind of does the same thing, Tony. So if you've got a, an ink pad, and because this is just petal pink, this is going to be hard to see, but right here is my mask. I can see my mask, but I still got color down. So I guess if you don't have markers, you could just use your ink pad. Um, pick up some color with a watercolor brush and color your block. And do it the same way. Um, oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> Tony, I'm just a little bit behind in the comments, so I'm sorry. Um, sounds like you figured it out. But that was, that was good for us to try. Um, and it will work for someone else who finds that they don't have exactly what color they want to use but you know let's say hey I don't have the marker in that color but I have an ink pad so we just brainstormed that and that was fun okay so we're gonna let these dry and what we're gonna do we'll come back and stamp our rose when that paper is dry. Let's put our card together, okay? So I have these pieces here that I'll that I'll use. So what we have is I'm using a basic white thick card base, and it's eight and a half by five and a half inches scored at four and a quarter so your regular card nothing fancy about this one nothing fancy about this fold and in the cutting instructions yesterday i had you cut a four by five and a quarter inch piece of designer series paper for the back you know i like to not only is it using up my designer series paper but there's more designer series paper to admire when it's on, on your card. So we're just going to put this down on the back. Give it a nice little border all the way around. Okay, and while I've got this here... I'm going to go ahead and put my button on the back. I've had a lot of questions on where I had my stamp made. And it's Creative Images. If you go to www.cistamps, you can design your own um, stamp and they will create it for you. I've had this for forever. <laughs> um, the inside of our card 
I'm going to set that aside. I've already stamped my greeting or my sentiment. Now here I have a 3 8 inch strip of designer series paper. I just it just needs to be long enough I can wrap it around. So it could be six inches. This is longer. I'm not going to cut it down. It's a scrap. And so what I'm going to do is just put it off here to the left side. Put a little bit of glue there. I really, really love how nice wrapping finishes that edge. And then I'm going to keep my finger down here because I don't want to put glue really past that till I flip it over. So what I've done is I just put some adhesive on the back of the strip. I'll lay it down and try to get a nice even edge. That's not my forte. Okay. And then finish wrapping it. I just love how clean that edge is. So there's the inside. And now I can glue this down. Again, just going to try to center it. I love just how clean and simple basic white in this petal pink and the early espresso. I am a big fan of putting white on white. I don't, um, I think it just looks so clean and elegant by using white on white. I just love it. And I love combining the basic white with very vanilla, which is a reason why I really like the Abigail Rose designer series paper, because you can use very vanilla or white or use them both. And I think they're stunning when you use them both together. So we have our back, we have our inside. Now we need to work on the front. I know I should use this more. I always just push it aside. <laughs> okay, so um, the cardstock layer is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. This designer series paper piece is three and three quarters by five. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere that leaving just a peekaboo border of that petal pink. So just a peekaboo border. And now the strip that I am going to wrap around it, this is two and a half by six because I had a six inch square of this designer series paper. So um, I, I see there is an orientation. So I'm going to put it so that my leaves are, my flowers are standing up straight. And I'm just going to leave a little bit here to the right showing of the layers that we have underneath. And then I just kind of like to even up what's what's hanging over. And I'm going to pick these up all at the same time. And this is just for me. I just want to put a line where I don't want any glue um, beyond the area until I'm ready to, to glue it down. So right now I could go ahead and I could put some glue here. Let's 
let's go ahead and look at this again. And then once I like how much I've got exposed over here, and that's just preference, I'm just going to fold this over. And then just press that down. So I'm just wrapping that around. And then I'm not ready to fold that up there yet. So I'm just going to put, see how this flower here, this is, oh good, this is, I want to show you. Look at this flower here, and then look at this one here, and happiness abounds. I think it's the same flower. That's why this, this stamp set worked, and I didn't have the other one. So I didn't have to like feel like I couldn't do it, because I had something else that worked. Put this down. Make sure... Um, halfway straight <laughs> for me that's a feat and then just a little bit of glue there and finish wrapping this and just hold it down and then you've got that pretty finished edge there okay so we have that and then um we needed two circles I chose the petal pink stripe and then the crumb cake and early espresso flower. And what I liked about these circles was I thought they, since this was a spotlight technique, for me, I imagined like at a show, all these spotlights are moving around in, you know, all different directions, crossing over each other. So that's why I like the circles. I'm going to ask your opinion on something. I took another one of these petal pink striped circles and I ran this one through the stitched greenery die. Can you can you see that? Do you think that this looks too busy with the um it reminds me of machine quilting. Do you think that looks too busy? Give me um, some some smiley faces or something to um, let me know. And hopefully they show up on the camera. Should I try and use this one? Or stick with just the clean white stripe? So, see, I think this gets lost. But I don't know. It, it's adding more texture. Okay, I'm getting hearts and smiley faces. One face is like a no. <laughs> but I've got two more, two other cards. Judith says yes. She's a smiley face and hearts. Should we just try it? Because I've got two other cards that have just the plain. I, you know what? Let's be bold. Let's try it. And then I have um, this image here that'll sit there. Let's try it. Let's try it. This was something I thought of after the fact. So I apologize. You know how it is, though. When you start designing and creating something, you think of, oh, I should have used that and then you're making another card because you want to use the idea that you just came up with right so let's put this down and i don't know if this really has an orientation it's going to get covered up anyway so we're just going to sit it on top and over into the smoky slate and put that down. And now I've got three images here that I've already cut out that I'm going to use. This one really didn't pick up a lot, so that one's going to be set aside. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one. But we're going to pop that up with dimensionals. 
And I'm going to stick... Now, these are the dies from the um, Happiness Abounds bundle. So I stamped these little leaves and um, die cut them out. I'm going to use three of those, and I'm going to tuck them in behind this spotlight. Um, so at first, I'm just going to kind of lay them to where, and I don't want them going off my card. So what we better do is put this on here and make sure that we're not going outside of our card because then it probably will not fit in the envelope. And you can use, you could just go with two, you could put three, But whatever you want. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some glue dots on these. And then stick them to the back of that spotlight. And then put dimensionals down on everything. I'm just going to set that back there. Because then I'm just going to put my circle on top. And you might have a better way of doing this. But I don't want them to stick to that background paper. So I'm just... Oops, he didn't even want to stick. There you go. And then... I'll just put it like that. Pick those up. Now they're on the back. And now what I'll do is, um, where are my dimensionals? Am I still in camera? I have a tendency to put things down closer to me and then, then you can't see it. backs off okay get out of there I can move my card base now go back to just this and now just put this down And then I have a happy birthday that I stamped from the same stamp set. And I um, cut it out with the ban one of the banners from Stylish Shapes. So I'm going to pop this up too. And then we're going to put this on the card. And I'm going to have my, my ends just sticking off of there a little bit. Now I'm going to hold it up, make sure it's straight. That's not bad. And so this part of my card is done and I can put this on the front of my card base. And then all that's left is to put some Wink Stella on my leaves. I'd like to do that last because it needs a little time to dry. And put my solid faceted gems on. And there's our card. So let's get out the faceted gems. What I love is that there's petal pink. And that's the color that I wanted to pull out. So. Let 
Let's take some of these and put one right there. And I have a thing right now where everything's got to be like in twos like this. I like the style. I like the look. So that's a thing right now for me. So there's our card. And you know what? As busy as I thought this was going to be at the beginning, now it doesn't look so busy. And it gives it a really nice texture. So we've got clean, clean, and then we've got texture. That could add our little element of quilting since we didn't do an actual like quilt block. Hi, Doris and Robin. How are you? So I like it. I like that uh, that we tried that. And so now, just take my Wink of Stella and just put a little sparkle in my leaves. I'm just going to go on the kind of on the bottom and bring it up along the outside edges. I like how it darkens and, and it actually does some shadowing. So I like that. And we'll let that dry. So there's a little bit of sparkle and shimmer. So that's the card. So let's go back to the um, the ones that we stamped. Let's go back to the technique. Let's get this all out of the way for a moment. Let's bring these back in. They're dry. They're dry enough. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna stamp the image in the opening that created that spotlight. I need. I need this though because I need some cushion because of the photopolymer stamp. So I'm going to use early espresso. And you really can see where the mask was. You can see it really well now that it's dried. I gotta find. <laughs> to find my image so I'm just gonna ink this up and just do my best to to get in that area I'm stamping away from me so it's a little hard to see if I'm right in the right spot but I can generally get there I'd like that there's a little bit of color on the petals so there's one There's two. Again, I'm stamping away from myself, so I'm not totally getting it lined up. But that is okay with me. That is totally okay with me. And then there's the third one. So look at the three different looks. Again, with this technique, you're not going to get any two that come out exactly the same way. And then what I would do is, this is the stylus shape circle that I used. I would just center that and run it through the cut and emboss machine and uh, have these in a little stash. And maybe I don't want a circle, so maybe I wouldn't cut all of them right away because I'm wondering on this square, which square would... Um, let's see, maybe this... Mm, I think we'd want a little bit bigger than that one. We'll see. You could do a square and then leaving this to um, leaving it exposed so some of the, the background really gives it that feel that it was coffee dyed or tea dyed 
and maybe you spilled something on it and it ran and, and dried that way. Or you could use the smaller one. And what if you wanted to do a diamond? What if you wanted to put your image on point? You could do that and put it, you know, you, you don't have to do circles. You don't have to do circles. You could do this, try it with another shape. But I'm just trying to give you some options. And in this set here, you got some really, a lot of choices for different sizes. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you that, that you could do something other than a circle. If you have punches, use your punches. Um, a square is really um, easy just to cut with your trimmer. So you could do that if you don't have um, punches or dies. There's always a way around something so that you can still get it done. Sometimes we just have to be really creative in our thinking, but we can usually achieve it if we want it bad enough. So there's the technique again. And then here's our card from today. This is one that I had done. And here's one. So if you can see real well, this has got the stitched greenery in it. And then the other ones are a little bit more clean and simple. But I think it gives it, I, I really like these aged antique colors. And it really helps bring back, bring out um, the feel from the journal that's on the, on the back. And then you've got your inside. I think it's really nice and elegant, um, very comforting colors. I think it would make a pretty, uh, I hate it when we have to make sympathy cards, um, but you could, you could really comfort someone, I think, with the design, with the, the if you choose colors that are very muted um, and soft. And the early espresso, it is dark, but it really is softened by the other colors, too. So, oh, Tony, I'm glad that you like it. Okay, you go. I'll look for your um, your creations over in the group. So that's today's project. I want to, I've been holding off making an announcement because... The reports aren't finalized yet with Stampin' Up, but if my calculations are correct, and I believe that they are, but I wanted to see it for real, because of you, I hit my goal for the end of the year, the end of the Stampin' Up year, and I met the goal for that I set for myself for orders for the last quarter. So thank you so much. I've been, today reports are supposed to be finalized. And I didn't want anyone to think that I had forgotten. Um, I was just waiting to see it for myself. Um, but I cannot be that far off that, um, that I didn't hit it. So I want to thank all of you who helped me um, achieve those goals and the sisterhood among demonstrators was surprising and phenomenal and so heartwarming. Um, it really, really touched my heart. So thank you. Thank you for supporting me um, by being here when we do the lives I understand that a lot of um, the people who watch are already demonstrators and have demonstrators. Just you being here and, and sharing this time with me means so much. It is anytime we can support each other in any kind of way. It's awesome and so appreciated. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the congratulations. Um, and also, guess what? You know how um, 
Okay, so if you do a, a million dollars, you get a stamp set, right? Well, I'm 970 some thousand dollars um, away from my million dollar stamp set. So what I'm trying to say is without, I, I don't like to, I don't pay attention to numbers, but I went over $25,000 in the um, two, two years that I really started focusing on my business. So thank you, everybody. Um, that to me is an achievement. And like I said, I'm only $975,000 away from getting my own stamp set. So, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to really be in that moment because for my age, I don't know if I'll ever hit a million, but to know that I'm that much closer <laughs> to getting my own stamp set, it's, it's fun for me to think about. So, um, thank you everybody. Um, next week, I'm sorry, but there won't be a live because I'm going to be out of town dog sitting for, for my uh, family. Um, I just have to feel out the situation and, but for right now, I think I'm just going to take a break and work ahead on some things. I have four little doggos to take care of, um, a six month old Shih Tzu a very old Shih Tzu. We've got a Pomeranian and Elmo is like maybe a cockapoo mix, but they're all tinies. And so I'm going to have my hands full with four of them. I'm going to be loving on them and spoiling them and taking a lot of work with me for the week um, to, to do. So I just don't know if doing a live would fit in We'll feel it out, but right now I think I'm just going to take the week to get ahead on some projects and um, go from there. Oh, one more thing. When this is over, I do have a PDF ready for the technique and uh, the card we made for today. So I will upload that um, PDF in the files over in the group, Quilt Cards and More. If you haven't joined... Request to join so I can get you in there. And if you go to the file section, I've been trying really hard to make sure there's a PDF for the Thursday projects. And you can go back and you can get past projects that you can work on, okay? So everybody have a very blessed day. And um, I'll be checking in with you and staying active within the group and sharing things about Stampin' Up. But for right now, I'm just going to forego a live next Thursday. I might change my mind. Who knows? So everyone, have a good day.